servant, O oh my slave, do you think that I have created you for no purpose, for no reason, and that you will not be returned to us? Is this how you live your life? When the deeds are weighed, Everybody will want to come and try to think of a way how they can make their scale heavier on that day. Maybe there's another chance. Maybe there's still a way. So now the scales have been resolved. Secondly, the weighing. Now, the crossing. There is not one of you but will pass over hellfire. This is with your Lord a decree which must be accomplished. Then we shall save those who had taqwa and we shall leave the wrongdoers in hellfire, in misery, down on their knees, feebled. There is not one of you but will pass over it. Salman al-Faris radiyallahu anhu, he cried and he ran. He did not allow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to finish the recitation because he realized everybody has to go through Jahannam. And then he cried and cried and cried and cried. And they brought him back to Rasulullah. And his eyes were black and dark. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, all of us. The bridge over hell is like the sharp edge of a sword. The first group to cross it will pass like a flash of lightning. The second group will pass like the wind. The third group will pass like the fastest horse. The fourth group will pass like the fastest cow. Then the rest will pass while the angels will be saying, Oh Allah, save them, save them. Even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will pass it. Every person will pass the Sirat, this bridge which is bestowed over hellfire. The crossing of this bridge, my dear brothers and sisters, is a very dark one. It's very, very dark. And only your light will make you cross, as we said. The people with great light will pass very quick. The people with a little bit of light, they will have it on the edge of their thumb. And it will sometimes light up and at times it will go darken. And Rasul Sallallahu describes this bridge over hellfire as well, saying hellfire will be burning underneath somehow. And it has claws that reach it, that try to grab people from there. It's hungry. It has a tongue which comes out as well. And it will scrape people. Some people will cross it and they have been scraped by the claws of hellfire and burnt. Some of them will fall and they will be saved later on. And some of them will fall and they will never be saved. Now here, the disbelievers, when they come to pass it, it means that they will go onto the bridge and then they will fall. They will not be saved. There will be people who are hypocrites. They used to say we're Muslim, but they weren't. And when they see the light, on people among the Muslims who they used to know in this life and find and discover how fast they're crossing they plead to them they will say to them please wait for us wait we used to know you in the former life in other verses says, we used to know you let us take a little bit of your light just a little bit angels will scream at them go back you have no room go Go back and you try and find light behind you. Meaning, what did you leave behind of good deeds for you to find any light? The only light on that day is the light which you put forth. A wall is separated between them and the believers. One side, it has mercy. And the other side, it has torture and torment. So these hypocrites will fall and they will be in the lowest of the lowest pits of hellfire. Even lower than Iblis himself. Now there is a group of people who will reach in accordance to some narrations, some Sahabas interpreted this verse, saying that they will reach a high cliff on the bridge, but they have not passed yet. And they will be 
stationed there. They can't go forward and they are also not falling into hellfire. So they're saved from the fire, but they can't also go forward. They're right in the middle. Why are they on high cliffs? They said because they are called the A'raf. It, it generally means a peak somewhere high. That's why they said they'll be somewhere high. And Allah knows best. Also, Al-A'raf means those who you know. So these people will be known. By who? They'll be known by the believers and they'll be known by disbelievers. Who are they? They are the people whose good deeds were exactly equal to the amount of their bad deeds. What happens to these people? Allah is not oppressive. The disbelievers in the hellfire will see them and they begin to give them bad hope. They will say, you're going to fall. And the believers on the other side will say, oh, our Lord save them. They are left towards the end. Then a voice calls out to the people of hellfire and it will say, as in the Quran, see these people that you knew in the former life? They did some wrong things with you? You thought that we are going to place them with you in here. But today we will give them our mercy and before your eyes, watch how we will save them. And so Allah will save the people of the Araf and take them over the bridge and they will await at the door of Jannah. Your Lord is not an oppressor to any of his servants. No one. Muslim or non-Muslim. Allah says, then we will save those who had taqwa. For those people who when they are about to do something wrong, they remember Allah. They remember His punishment. They love Allah so much that they do not want to lose that love. So what do they do? They physically avoid the forbidden thing. And it also means those who did the wrong, but then later on remembered Allah and repented. These are the people who will be saved when they cross. And some of them who fell into hellfire, they'll also be saved later on through the intercession, as we said, of the angels, the believers, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The good news is, ya ikhwati fillah, and then we will go a place before Jannah called Al-Qantara. Do you know Al-Qantara, ya ikhwati fillah? Qantara is a place before Jannah. After you pass the bridge, there's a place called Qantara. What, is, what are you doing in Qantara? Qantara, we as a Muslims, we will be judged again. Believers will be judged again among themselves. Amma will say, Ya Allah, I was standing next to Brother Saeed for five minutes. I got tired. Why did he do this to me? I, I gave him all the signals. I got up. I was standing right there. I looked at him. I keep looking at him. <laughs> You know, why did he do this to me? Why? I want my ajr. And then Allah will say to Brother Saeed, give him his right. And I say, Ya Allah, from where? My a'mal is gone. I have nothing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go back and he say, look. And he will look, he will see Hur al Ain. Jannah, palaces, rivers, and he was, oh Allah, is this for a messenger or a prophet? Or what is it? Who is this for? And Allah said, This is for you if you forgive your brother Said. And then Allah, he will say, I forgive you, Ya Allah. <laughs> and then the other person will come husband and wife, brothers and sisters, you know, two brothers in the masjid, and all will be settled and everything would be finished. And then, in that, there's a river called River Nahr al Haya or Al Hayawan. In this river, we will go and we'll drink from it. It will purify us from inside. No jealousy, no ill feelings toward a Muslim brother or a sister. Rasulullah and Abu Bakr as Siddiq, MashaAllah, they, they're in the highest level in Jannah. This person is the lowest level in Jannah. They're both happy. There is no more jealousy, no more like, you know, I want to be there. No, I'm happy where I am. I'm happy. But look, do you want to be there? Or you want to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You want to be his neighbor, right? And then 
we will also bathe in that river, we will all be beautiful. We will look as handsome as possible. And you will look so fine that your whole line will get dizzy when she sees you. Brothers, she will get dizzy and say, Whew, who is this guy? You, know, you will look so fine, inshallah. And then the sisters, they will be so beautiful that when you see them, when you see your wife in Jannah, if you were in this dunya, your soul would leave your body. You would die simply because how she looks like. But I leave you with this story about the good deeds. There was a man by the name of Malik ibn Dinar, a great scholar of the past. This man was a thief before he became a scholar. And he used to drink alcohol. One day he saw a tyrant man who had an employee and this employee was poor. And the man would not give him his, his wage for the day. So he said to him, give him his wage. Malik ibn Dinar, he had some mercy and the tyrant would not give him. So Malik ibn Dinar took out some wealth and gave it to the poor man and said to him, tell your daughters tonight to make dua for Malik ibn Dinar. They made dua for him. And one day he wanted to get married. No one would give him their daughter because he was a thief and an alcoholic. So he bought a slave. There were slaves in those days. He bought a slave, freed her and married her. And then Allah gave him a daughter named Fatima. At the age of five, his daughter died. He loved her so much and he was saddened for her loss. Time passed and one day he saw a dream as if the world had ended and he saw in front of him the fire and behind him there was a, a dragon chasing him. He said, I ran away from the dragon and I reached a cliff and in that cliff I was about to jump but there was hellfire. So I turned away and the dragon's behind me. He said, I ran and reached the ocean and there I saw a very old man. He couldn't even speak to me. So he pointed this way and said, go that way. I went and I found a cliff and in that cliff there were children and the children called out, Ya Fatima, save your dad. And then I saw my daughter Fatima. She came up to me and she did this with her hand and the dragon faded away. And she said to me, Dad, look, your bad deeds are the dragon. They weren't big enough to save you and your good deeds are the old man. They're not even enough to save you. The bad deeds are so bad that they're so big and your good deeds are so bad that they couldn't save you. And then she recited, is it not time for those who believe to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before their hearts harden?